but we'll touch on that point as we get there. Okay, so let me go up to our board here again, and I shall switch from these numbers in my awful handwriting. And so, I now have three servers. When we draw clusters, when you see a rectangle like that, node, 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 and let's call them A, B, C. Sure. B, B. C. So they're going to, we're going to build that, and these are 30 drives. You got it. Yep. So I'm going to put them into, and we want them in groups of 15. So we'd have 15 here, 15, 15, 15, mm -hmm. 15. Now, I could build with 15 there, or I could leave it empty. Go talk to the boss man in the company, in your company, and say, uh, so I can do either one. Let's, uh, At this point, your gigabyte per dollar goes down, too, if you fill that one in, too, so it looks way more attractive. Looks more attractive, <laughs> yes. Dollars per gigabyte. Perfect. Uh, so let's put that. Let's do that. And we're leaving a little expansion capacity here. Yeah, you, yeah this is a... That's perfect. Yeah. You're good for today. You're good for next year. And, and yeah. And, and we got this thing. And for this use case, I've just added an extra 20% that we've added on top of that. And uh, good to overshoot a little bit. I got some headroom on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So this is these are raid arrays. We're gonna you know, That's you're correct. gonna come along and you're gonna set up raid arrays in that. That's right. So like you said, you grew. So we split it into our two groups. We've got our 15. So you can imagine each one of these is a raid array. And it's a raid six. We calculated that out. Okay. So we are using. You, you mentioned we, we want to use snapshots. So we would build. A, we're going to use software raid in this case. We, so we build MD ADM array that comes up. We we make our physical volume uh, out of this one and this one. Then we make a volume group, which is our pooling our hard drives. And now we're ready to cut our logical volumes, the L of the LVM, and that will be our bricks. Okay. So. So now in this case. Yep. How many bricks? Would you just have one brick per server? Or would you have two bricks per server? Which way would you, do, so would you recommend doing that? We're building a non-replicated cluster right yep. here. Yeah. So we just need a big storage space. So yep. I'd recommend each node is its own brick. Each, so, each node is a brick. Yep. You can have multiple bricks in a node if you want. You but, can have... But just simplicity, non-replicated cluster. You're just adding in the ability to add in more machines when you want. And so... Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. I can't stress this enough with cluster and just a big namespace distributed cluster. Very easy in terms of you just keep it simple. Big brick, big brick, big brick. So you, these are RAID volumes. We'd make a volume group pool on top of it. So my horrible red rectangle here is our virtual storage pool that we built out of our hardware RAIDs. Okay, so that's LVM I'm using to that's put those LVM. together. You got and it. once I got them LVM'd, that uh, pool is now a brick. We just refer to it as a brick. Yeah, so we built our logical yeah. volume such that it's the size of this brick. Well, 90% of it, and that's what I was talking about with yep. it. Yep. Yeah. So, brick, one of what, how do I so We'll just go, uh, well, this, this would be brick one, this will be brick two, and this will be brick three. Oh, geez. B2, B1. And then the architecture of our cluster is, it's, this is the fun part of cluster, and cluster is very simple to set up. A little bit of uh, math and stuff to figure out the RAID and the amount of space you're going to need. But now that we've got that figured out and we actually need to put the pool together, it really is just one command of telling this, th or two commands, sorry. You tell, you tell the, this main server, it's peers, okay. and then you say, make me a volume with... Hey, this becomes main server, which shows a node A as being main server? Yeah. Well, it's... And yeah. when I say main server, one of the best yeah. parts of Gluster is there is no main server. Okay. Each one works just as much as the other one does. Nice. Okay. So, yeah. Truly distributed. Truly distributed. Yeah. Yeah. So when we say main server, it's just I went to A and I administered from there because that's the first one I went into. Yep. It doesn't mean that this one is the brain and needs yep. to be up at all just, times. Just, just that you happen to set it up. I could, have, I could have hopped into node just B and set it up choice. from there. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So what we'll do here is I'll say node A. Yep. Node A's brick one is tied to node B's brick two which is joined into node C's brick three. And then this will show the added capacity of all three. Okay. 
That's it. And that's that's it. That's your cluster volume. And up uh, up and done. I'm operating. I kick that into the network, and I can set up my shares and you got users it. and shares and security and all that other fun yep. stuff that everybody gets to do. Because at this point, you just have a big storage volume. If you set up a Sama share and NFS users, as far as they're concerned, they just see a big storage share. They don't know about what's going on underneath, which is great for administration purposes and all that. Okay. And so let's just get that around to how to do this for somebody. You know, somebody's a sysmin looking to do this and you know has outgrown. Uh, you know, single storage spaces and, and all that kind of thing and trying to figure out where stuff is. They want to go into, into clustering. So this is straightforward enough that somebody can go set this up on their own. You got it. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, no hesitation recommending like uh, that other than get a little help architecturally, make sure from somebody who's experienced. And once you got that, you can go in and do that if you wish. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Now, we regularly, we sell pre-configuration and, and support mm -hmm. to you. You got it, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, so if, if, if that was sold pre-configured, uh, how's the process happen? So I'm a sysadmin, what should I expect? I, I order, you know, uh, let's say I order everything from us. You order three Q30s and uh, and I let's say I'm the sysadmin, I ordered three Q30s and I ordered, uh, yeah, blah, 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 yeah, how many hard drives do I have? I got, uh, 15, 75. I got 75 hard drives. We added 15 more. Uh, we got 90 hard oh, drives. Yeah, that's good math there. Yeah. So I have to do the math in my head. <laughs> it's amazing how hard it is to multiply 30 times 3. So I ordered those hard drives in order pre-configuration. What arrives on my site? So you get one, two, three boxes, okay. which are our storage servers, our storinators, and then you will get a your hard drives drop shipped to you as well. So they'll, they'll all arrive, your servers. What you'll do is you'll rack this. You'll have to you get them up and pingable on the network. Bare minimum is that you can reach them from some client machine. On They don't have to be set up. You don't have to have your 10 gig set up or anything like that. You just have to be reachable. At that point, you uh, come into your scheduled pre-config with our wonderful support team. Okay. And we use our um, set of tools that we created to kind of script the whole process. So what we do is we kind of go over again what we talked about in the first part of the video. Usually that's all decided at time of sale and all that because you need to know how big yeah. and how much stuff to buy. Yeah. But we kind of review again and just go, because sometimes we make some t tweaks or changes sometimes. So we just review that again. We nail down exactly what it is. And uh, we use two sets of tools, one, one called G-Tools, a set of scripts and bash tools that we created, and G-Deploy, a wonderful, wonderful kind of wrapper around Ansible that the uh, the Red Hat guys created. That's Red Hat's. Okay. Red Hat. Yeah. Um, okay. yeah, exactly. So uh, we use a combination of our G-Tools and G-Deploy. So we kind of fill in some of the gaps that it didn't have that's purpose-built for our servers. Okay. So our, our technicians help you through that process and then just kind of educate you to what you're getting and how to administer it and and uh, and we help with the shares and shares oh it's yep. it's listen we don't stop until everything's up and ready to go so like usually it's a building a cluster getting the share out joining an active directory and then it goes okay go go use it test it try some stuff and then and we get some network tuning tends to happen network as well. tuning yeah usually network tuning we'll do our we'll set up and just keep uh, keep defaults use the red hat or the centos kind of like i don't know if anyone's familiar but there's tuned profiles so we'll just use the we'll use the defaults recommended and then okay. once it's being used for a little bit we'll kind of tweak and make those final little um alterations for the environment that it's in because open source software and in something uh, that can be complex. Sometimes you have to tweak and tune for uh, people's different needs. Okay. So nope. really, when it's over is when they go, okay, we're happy, we're in production, it's working. Okay. Yeah. And we as an open organization, we encourage people to do it whichever way they want. You want to set it up yourself, great. We're here to help. And, and we're there behind you. And if you wish us to do all the pre-config, it comes with everything on it, and we'll come in there and just make it happen for you. Yeah, and the tools that I mentioned are all open source on our GitHub and all that too. So if someone wants to just take our document, our tools, ask maybe a question or two to our support team and then just go off on their merry way and do it themselves, by all means, that's supported as well. You want to come in a bit later and say, hey, boys, want to take a look at this, tune it up, or see that I did everything right? We're here to help you do that as well. Okay. So, Brett, so in our experience, we've set up lots and lots of these clusters, and I'm just trying to think of, you know, could you offer anybody, so you, you can do this on your own, but 
you know, my experience, everything that I've done in my years as a you know, researcher and engineer and, and uh, you know, there's gotchas and yeah. things. Yeah, anything in general you put your, your hand on in there? Anything specific or is it just general? Can you tell me about what kind of gotchas you get? In it's, this? it's not so much specific and, and kind of like you may have noticed from the talk we've had so far, it's building a Gluster volume uh, is a bit like stacking a couple Lego bricks on each other. There's a whole stack to this. So you can imagine if like when you go to build your, create your file system on your LVM, but say your MD8, MD80M rate wasn't done syncing yet, what you're going to find is it's going to hang. Okay. So, and then the way to fix it is you've got to go pause the sync, and then that'll finish. And, but you can imagine to an unexperienced person building this, they're going, okay, I'm going to build my cluster. It all works. I'm following the documentation. And something weird, little glitchy like that happens, where it's not broken. It's just somewhere in the stack affected somewhere up top. So where we're so experienced with this now, like when we first started building these things, it was like, oh, geez, why is that happening? But we, we're just so familiar with the stack. Sometimes it's, it's so that's what dig, it is. So you dig into a log, something goes, yeah. and we can dig in a log and look at it. Or someone goes, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm running G-Deploy, and it, it hangs every time I make the make a fess. Well, uh, uh, is your RAID still syncing? Yeah, okay, so just run this command. That'll pause it. Run this again. It'll, it'll uh, unpause it, and then that can finish. Or just wait till your RAID's done. But to an unexperienced, that might seem like, this doesn't work. I'm giving up. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of what the idea is. It's, it's, as someone, I, I don't want to say it's about open source, but... It's so powerful, but there is little. Well, that is the world open source, isn't it? Yeah, and, it and is. Why, isn't it? And, and why? I mean, your your license fee free, but you, you, there's the gotchas and learning curve that you do, and having an organization like us behind. And, and, and know, that's it. That, we we got nailed by those. We spent a lot of time, a lot of head scratching nights. Curve, yep. Why? 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 In our R and D lab, and now we know we know better, and we want to give back and, and share with the community. Yeah. So we just finished talking about how to put together a distributed cluster with, uh, with no replication in it. Uh, I can create a great big storage space. It's scalable. I have high performance. They're in RAID arrays. Uh, I got great performance on it. I got just about everything, but I got a problem. What happens if I had my nice system with three Q30s chugging away and one of those servers, the power supply goes down? Yeah, uh, the X on it, the, the, the evil X on the system diagram. What happens? Uh, my all my clients out there, and I got a hundred people working in cubicles out there that I'm responsible for keeping going. What happens? Okay, so we got our pool of bricks. That is what our cluster volume is. But we've lost one of our bricks. All the data that was on those bricks, they're 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 not gone. They're just unavailable because that server's <sighs> down. I'm not getting fired. No, you're not getting fired. Okay. Don't worry. At the end of the day, no. no matter what, even if someone's going knocking on your door, going, "I can't get my files." Just give me some time, they'll be back, okay. type Beautiful. of idea, yeah. right? So what happens in this case with your distributed volume is I.O. pauses. You cannot write to this volume anymore. Okay. And that's protection, Gluster's going, no, 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 I'm missing some bricks, don't give me any more stuff, I don't, I don't know what's going on right now. Okay. And what happens is these, you should still be able to read from those, okay. but some of your data will be missing. So long story short is uh, you'll have a little bit of downtime till you get this guy back up. So in some situations, say you've got some time or whatever, or it's not mission critical, everyone needs to be working from this all the time, then this is perfectly fine. I'm just thinking of the image here, Brett, when our organization, as you know, <laughs> uh, you know, something fails, and all of a sudden a head pops up, and then another head pops up, they start talking, and the yeah. decibel level that in used about to happen 10 minutes a lot. is just uh, a roaring loud. And uh, yeah, we really don't have, we, we use... Well, that's it. That we, used to happen a lot until yeah. we, till we put yeah, this in place. We're a high availability, uh, yeah. high availability cluster. And now everyone rolls their eyes at me because they they got to work all the time. <laughs> <There's>, nothing's perfect, <laughs> is yeah, it? I Never know, make everybody happy. Bosses are happy, they are. The bosses are happy. <laughs>